I am a 33 year old white female from Los Angeles. Three years ago, my boyfriend and I, as planned for five years, turned 30, sold everything we owned, including my car, took his trailblazer, and decided to just travel around the States and Canada. I guess you could call us backpackers, as we tend to chase good weather, find a state park, and backcountry hike into the wilderness for days at a time. My brother likes to joke that we are anti-establishment hippies. We don't necessarily live off the grid, but between the two of us, we have one prepaid phone we use for emergencies or checking in with family and friends, and one map book which I use for work. I'm a freelance writer, content creator, and I'm on retainer with Robotics Company. I mostly write boring white papers or web content. The whole point of our living situation is to live debt free and have as few bills as possible. I only use free Wi-Fi, so one to two times a week we have to go to a city with the Starbucks. This background information is only important so you know more about who we are and how simply we live. Neither of us is involved in social media, and know very little of Reddit, or Instagram, or use any apps. So, last summer, we decided to do some backcountry hiking in Arkansas. It's one of those states you don't ever really hear about other hikers visiting, but we read that it had some beautiful natural landscape. The rules at this particular park were pretty relaxed. We didn't need a permit. There were a few basic laws and guidelines, but there was no check-in needed. We had all the basics, and had planned to do a six-day hike. The whole time we were out there, we didn't see or hear another soul. But on day one, we were prepping to move off trail and find a camping spot, as it was getting near dusk. We took what looked like a kind of animal trail, and about half a mile out, we saw a green, two-person tent. It was almost camouflaged in the foliage, so we came on it almost by accident. Some backpackers prefer privacy, others are more social. We're the more social type. We've had some great experiences camping near other backpackers, sharing stories, food in a joint or two. We were around 30 yards away from the tent, so my boyfriend shouted a greeting to make our presence known. No movement and no sound. We assumed the green tent guy either wasn't around or didn't want to be bothered, so we started off in a new direction to get some distance between us. We camped and never heard a peep. We moved along the next morning, completely forgetting about the green tent guy, until nearing the end of day five on our trek back. We were again looking for a spot to camp off the trail when we came up on the green tent again. This isn't that unusual, but normally backcountry hikers keep moving, so we really weren't expecting it. The tent flap was open, so my boyfriend yells his greeting again, and nothing. My boyfriend wants to go check it out, saying it's weird and maybe someone is hurt. I didn't like the idea from the get-go because even though we hadn't had any bad experiences personally, we'd heard enough stories from other backpackers about hermits and mountain men that want privacy and carry guns. But my boyfriend assured me we'd be fine, and that if all else fails, we'd offer him some weed to keep the peace, and we'd go on our way. As soon as we get within 20 yards of the place, the smell of decomposition is intense. My boyfriend has been hailing his greeting over the last 20 yards, and once the smell hits him, he stops and turns to me, and says, What if we find a dead body? My skin crawled. I was immediately afraid. I've never seen a dead body before, and I don't want to. The closer we got to the tent, the worse the smell got. I knew for sure we were going to walk in, and see some old camper's rotting corpse. What we found was worse than that. Outside the tent was a dead doe's legs, all four of them covered in flies. It looked like the legs had been cut most of the way and then ripped off the rest of the way. 
It was a mess. Inside was the body and head of a deer, but the middle portion was swaddled in a blue fleece blanket that was blood soaked at the bottom where the legs used to be. It was laying on its side, bottom facing the tent entry. The tail had been cut off, and the anus and vagina was covered in dried blood and a gape, almost like something had been penetrating it, the same with its mouth. The bottom portion was bent down at a scary, broken looking angle. The tent was open, so we could see everything without having to go inside. Not that we would have anyway, because at this point, the smell was almost debilitating. There was a dirty, almost empty clear bottle of Jurgen's baby oil, and a stained, green and white fringed kitchen towel. I immediately started crying, and begged him to go. All he could muster was, What the fuck? And we turned and ran. We ran to the trail, and jogged down it for as far as we could go, until dusk was fully on us, and we had to set up camp. We didn't go very far off the trail, and neither of us slept. We didn't start a fire, or use headlamps after full dark. We just sat up, whispering to each other, going over and over what we had just seen. Every little noise startled us. It was like our brains were on red alert. I kept thinking, any moment, a deer rapist would come back to his tent, see our footprints or something, know we were there, and track us back to our tent. I've never been so scared in my entire life. Just before dawn, we tore down and started out. My boyfriend stopped at the ranger station on our way out of the park to report what we had seen. The ranger was a young guy, around our age, and he looked as freaked out by our story as we were telling it. He wrote most of it down, and my boyfriend showed him on a map approximately where it had been. He asked if he knew how the deer was killed, and at that point, we hadn't even thought about it. We just assumed it had been shot, but because of the blanket, we didn't see a wound, but we weren't exactly giving it an autopsy either. We have since shortened our backcountry hikes to a maximum of four days. We've also been a lot less eager to call out to other campsites, and have never approached another or man tent again. This story happened when I was about 17 years old, and my friend at the time was 16 years old. We are both female. One night, we were at my parents' house, which is basically small town USA and we decided to go for a walk around my neighbourhood. It wasn't too late, but it was starting to get dark. It was maybe around 9 or 9.30pm. There were a few houses being built in my neighbourhood at the time, so we decided to go and explore the inside of one. We entered the house through the garage area, because there wasn't a door, and the house was basically a frame with only a few walls. I stayed near the entrance, because I was getting really bad vibes, but my friend decided to go further into the house. About two or three minutes into our exploration, I heard moaning sounds coming from the half-built stairs. I asked my friend if she heard it, and she said no, and kept on looking at stuff. That was when I saw a very large man stand up on the stairs and start to walk down them. I grabbed her, screamed run, and we bolted out of there. I refused to look back the entire time, because I was too scared to see if he was running after us. Once we got to my house, we ran inside and locked the doors. Nothing else happened that night. The next weekend, the same friend was over at my house again, and we were sitting outside on my trampoline at about 1am. We were talking when she stopped mid-sentence and went as pale as a ghost. When I asked her what was wrong, all she said was, We need to go inside, right now. While we got off the trampoline, she never took her eyes off the spot of my yard she was looking at. 
Once inside, I asked her what the hell that was about. She said someone was in my backyard, sitting by my mum's flower bed, about 15 feet from the trampoline. The person was on the ground, rocking back and forth, while staring at us. My mum and stepdad were already asleep, so we didn't want to bother them. Instead, we made sure all of the doors and windows were locked, and that there was a weapon by the door, if it came to that. After we calmed down, we went down to the basement to my room, and started watching some movies. The street lamp was shining through the little window in my room, and I shit you not, there was someone walking back and forth, in front of my window. At this point, we were so scared, we decided to wake my stepdad up. He went outside, and didn't find anyone. Nothing happened again for a few weeks, until one day, I was home by myself, and kept getting weird phone calls on the landline. It was a guy with a really deep voice, asking how I was doing, and what I was doing, and if my mum and stepdad were home. I hung up on him every time, without answering. About 20 minutes after the last phone call, I heard a loud crashing sound in my basement that scared the fuck out of me. That was about all I could take. I pushed our couch against the basement door, grabbed a butcher knife, and got the fuck out of there to my neighbour's house. Luckily, her dad was home, and called the police. When the police got there, I told them everything that had been happening, and they checked out my basement. Someone had popped out the window in my bedroom, and it shattered all over my bed. There was no one in my basement, and nothing has ever happened since. So, terrifying stalker guy, let's not meet again.